So about a week ago, I listened to Frank Ocean's channel Orange for the first time in at least two years. This album was a pretty big deal for me when I was in high school, but I realized I had actually forgotten quite a lot about it in that gap. One of those things was that most of the songs on Channel Orange aren't about Frank Ocean. Well, sort of. Basically, Frank writes characters on the album. Characters anywhere between ancient Egyptians and super rich kids. But what I think makes Channel Orange great is that once the album ends, you still feel like you've gotten to know Frank. He's not just a narrator. It succinctly defines me as an artist for, you know, where I am right now, you know, and that was the aim just to make something that just represents where you are at that time. So how do we find out who Frank Ocean is through his characters? I think a good place to start is with Sweet Life and Super Rich Kids. It's curious that on both of these tracks, Frank mentions the TV as how these characters perceive the world outside of their bubble. On Sweet Life, you hear this. Keeping it to real. Not sugar free, my TV ain't HD, that's too real. And on Super Rich Kids, you hear this. Point the clicker at the tube. I prefer expensive news. These lines make me think back to the title, Channel Orange. For a long time, I had no idea what it meant. But imagine you tuned into a TV channel and it was just one color. You would basically be seeing the world through one lens which is exactly what Frank's characters are doing on these songs. They're choosing to lie to themselves, to live in their own personal fantasy made possible through wealth. But by the end of Super Rich Kids, we see that fantasy literally come crashing down, with Frank singing about just wanting real love over and over again. Interestingly, this motif of characters living inside fantasies isn't just limited to these two songs. Look at Crack Rock, for instance. It's a song about an addict who's hit rock bottom but is still fiending for that next high to escape from his problems. Then there's Lost, which tells the story of a drug dealer's girlfriend who gets lost in the thrill of being on the run. Or how about Pilot Jones, a song about a guy who thinks he's morally above his stoner girlfriend when in reality, he's addicted to her. But what does all of this have to do with Frank himself? Well, if I were to guess, I would say that he too is also living in some sort of fantasy on Channel Orange. And what is that fantasy? unrequited love. Frank delves into this on the song Bad Religion, which is probably the most personal track on the album and also the most stripped down. It's just Frank sitting in the backseat of a taxi expressing his feelings. Frank compares his unrequited love to a bad religion. It's something destructive to believe in because he's given his heart up to a guy who can never reciprocate those feelings. There's also a line here where he says, I can't tell you the truth about my disguise. I can't trust no one. I think this is a nod to his sexuality. Of course, before Channel Orange dropped, Frank posted a letter to his Tumblr, which revealed that his first real love was a guy. Him choosing to come out before the album connects to its themes of fantasy and reality. When asked about his decision, he said this, I knew that my star was rising, and I knew that if I waited, I would always have somebody that I respected be able to encourage me to wait longer, to not say it till who knows when. It was important for me to know that when I go out on the road and I do these things, that I'm looking at people who are applauding because of an appreciation for me. Frank could have waited. He could have changed his lyrics. And sure, maybe more people would have come to his shows or bought his album. But he would have been living a lie. Lots of the characters in Channel Orange aren't honest with themselves and choose to be naive in an attempt to hide from the truth. To bring up the title of the album again, Frank explained that he called it Channel Orange because of his synesthesia. He can see sounds. So during the summer where he first fell in love, orange was the only color he could make out. He literally could only see his love for that guy. With this in mind, you go back to the opening song, Thinking About You, and the whole thing is a fantasy about his first love. Frank's been thinking about forever and imagining a life with this person, but there's a disconnect between them. Just listen to the second verse. No, I don't like you, I just thought you were cool enough to kick it. Got a beach outside to sell you an item. Think I don't love you, I just thought you were cute. That's why I kissed you. Fighter jets, I don't get to fly. 
Frank clearly wants something more out of their relationship, but his crush only sees it as a casual thing and is oblivious to Frank's true feelings. So with bad religion, Frank has to come to terms with that and leave behind his fantasy. But that's not as easy as it sounds on paper. I've always seen the next song, Pink Matter, which has this amazing verse from Andre 3000 as Frank being in this mental state of, like, numbness to love. He's just had to accept that he can't be with the person he wants to be with, and now he's questioning what feeling actually is. It's a thought that I've had before, where it's like, what even are emotions if they're just chemical reactions in your brain? What makes kissing someone special if it's just a trigger to release dopamine and oxytocin? When you go into that place of ultra-reality, every experience just feels completely clinical and meaningless. And I think that's what Frank and Andre are exploring here. A lot of their verses involve them asking unanswerable questions. Questions they're asking themselves to process heartbreak. Particularly in Andre's verse, there's just this present sense of frustration, which culminates in him saying, for heaven's sake, go to hell. Even taking the song by itself, that level of resent feels out of character for him but it goes to show the type of irrational thoughts that heartbreak can bring on. So yeah, the end of Pink Matter is definitely the emotional peak of the album, and it feels like Frank is just flushing out his raw, even unconscious feelings. But because we've had that dark moment, when we arrive at the final song, Forrest Gump, it feels all the more earned. If I were to describe this song in one word, it would just be comfortable. Everything about it, from the drum groove to Frank's melodies, it's a fitting end to an album that's gone in so many different directions. Frank's reached a place where he still has feelings for his first love, but is able to leave his fantasy of a relationship in the past. I think this is symbolized by the lyrics, Forest Green, Forest Blues, I'm Remembering You. He's able to see both the positives and negatives of the whole situation with a level of detachment. It's no longer just one color.